What's up champ, I'm Vince Delmani of GeneExpressionTraining.com. In this video, we are gonna look at the truth about chest flies. There's a lot of people in this industry who need to shut up about certain exercises being bad. And we're gonna look at this exercise. There are certainly some inherent risks with this one, just like there is with every exercise. And we're gonna show you guys some of the challenges with the chest fly, but why it's a completely safe exercise and why you can continue doing it if done right, which will all be covered in this video. Horrible drawing, but you're gonna love what I'm about to teach you. Let's get into it. I've been studying this for many years, and one of my personal goals is trying to take these complicated topics and just making them really easy to understand. All right, even if you're in grade four, grade five, you should be able to re-explain this to your friend. And that's what we're gonna do here. I'm not here to impress you with my physics knowledge or my anatomy or biomechanics knowledge. All I'm about is practical applications that allow you to build muscle for a long time without getting hurt. That's where my thought process is coming from in context to all this information. So let's dive into this. Uh, what we have here is a demonstration of a chest fly. So this is your head lying on a bench. This is a shoulder joint, this is an elbow joint, this is the weight. Uh, this is at the length in range, this is the mid range, and this is at the short in range um, and we're gonna look at each of these different things. So this would represent this, the second would represent this, the third would represent this. So why do people have a challenge? There's a lot of people on YouTube who have a challenge with chest fly. So there's a number of things we do need to consider and we're gonna look at those right now. I want you to understand some of the things that are happening while we're doing a chest fly. So what we have here when we're in the lengthened position of a chest fly is what's called a moment arm, and it's a big moment arm. So what a big moment arm means is that we have a lot of distance, all right? So the weight's here, this is our shoulder joint, and the distance is great, which means there's a great moment arm, all right? Now let me ask you, when the distance is great from the point of the joint, is there more resistance or less resistance? Is it harder to hold the weight here or harder to hold the weight here, all right? So what we have, when we have big moment arms, we have a lot of distance, which equals a big resistance. So the weight is the heaviest. The weight's gonna feel the heaviest when you're in this position. You guys all understand that, right? Now, what's another problem when we have a big distance from the axis? We have our muscles in the position where they're weakest, all right? So we have a heavy weight, we have weak muscles, and we've got your joints in a position where they're very vulnerable. And if you're going into a position where you don't have active and available and controllable range of motion, when the weight's the heaviest and your muscles are the weakest, what could potentially happen? You're gonna hurt yourself. And let's take this a step further. Why are your muscles the weakest when they're in this position? Why are your muscles weak when they're in a lengthened position? Well, there's a couple reasons. One. When you're in the lengthened position of the strength curve, you have very little mechanical advantage. You have very little minimal ability to contract muscle, all right? There's a number of reasons for this, all right? One, from the leverage standpoint. Two, the nervous system has a very hard time communicating your muscles, to your, communicating with your muscles to contract when you're in this position, all right? And when you're in this lengthened position, you have a very poor ability to produce force. So when you're here, just stand here and try and contract your pecs right here. It's hard to find even any tension, right? You're like, I don't even, where's my chest? Where's, I can't even contract my chest in this length and range. So we've got the weight the heaviest, the muscles the weakest, and now we're going into this vulnerable position where we've got all this stuff crossing the shoulder joint that's now maybe getting um, challenged and getting smushed. And that's why people say, don't do the chest fly. And I fully agree with that. However, what do we teach on this channel, guys? It's not what you do, it's how you do it, right? So let's talk to you guys about how to do this properly, all right? People are, ex you know, a lot of people on the internet and, you know, different gurus are concerned with what's happening with the joints, but that's the wrong perspective. What you should be concerned about is what's happening with the muscles because your muscles control your joints. Right? You can't control what's going on with your joints. You can control what's going on with your muscles. 
your muscles can control whether you go into these extreme ranges with speed, with too much weight. Those are variables that you can control. So you don't have to look at the chest fly as that doing something bad to you. You now just go into the chest fly saying, okay, when I'm in this extreme range, I have to be very careful because the, my muscles are the weakest, the distance is the greatest, and the resistance is the heaviest. So knowing that, how does that apply to our training? We simply slow down and we don't race into those extremes. We don't use weights we can't control. If you're that concerned about the joints, just take control of how you're moving. You don't have to worry about this stuff. So people that say, never do the chest fly, it's a bad exercise, that's stupid. It doesn't make any sense because they're saying that you don't have control of what you're doing in the gym. So that's the mechanic side of things. That's the safety side of things. Now, if you talk to some bodybuilders, they might not like this exercise. And those are the unintelligent bodybuilders who don't know how to use exercises strategically because they might say, well, there's not constant tension in this full range of motion. And they are correct because the tension starts to drop off when the moment arm, so if this is the resistance here, the moment arm is getting less here. And when we're over top, there's no resistance there's no torque and there's really no resistance on your pecs at all in this position here. So people could say this part of the range is kind of wasted. You can make an argument for the chest flies, you're kind of wasting this whole part of the movement. But what we teach on this exercise is we look at exercises as tools. We understand that every exercise has pros and it has cons. So this exercise, while yes, people are correct, there's not any tension in this part of the range of motion and you might limit the range of motion just to in here. That could be a great tweak. We can also just say, hey, this exercise isn't generating any force here, which is a good thing because you get to rest, which means you're able to maybe load this a bit more if you're careful and you can get stronger in a position where you're typically weak. So there's always ways of looking at an exercise strategically and how it can be a pro and not a con if it's programmed properly. All right, so we always have to look at things in context. If you guys are looking at exercise in context of never do this, never do that, that's the way um, two-year-olds are raised, four-year-olds are raised. That's how you teach a kid, don't do this, don't do that. Well, then they never grow up and they never develop their critical thinking skills. And I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to be able to look at exercises and understand every exercise has a pro, every exercise has a con. All right, and we just have to understand how to skillfully organize our exercises into a program so we get the best of both worlds and we don't hurt ourselves. So the big take home here, guys, is that if you're controlling the movement, you will not get hurt. If there's only one thing you remember from this video, if you're controlling the movement, exercises can't hurt you. People in the industry are talking about being concerned about lengthening the muscle. Lengthening the muscle is normal. Lengthening tendons, ligaments, that's normal. If you're concerned with those things, just slow the movement down and don't go into range of motion that you can't control. Exercise is all about staying within your active, your available, contractile, controllable range of motion. All right? If you can't contract your muscle in a certain range of motion, don't go there because that's when you'll get hurt. All right? If you can't control a certain part of a movement, just don't go there and you won't get hurt. So that's the kind of the silliness of people saying never do the chest fly, never do this exercise, never do that exercise. It's like saying never drive a Lamborghini because it's fast. Well then don't drive it so fast. Problem solved. So that's it guys, a big theme of this Truth About series where we're looking at all these different exercises is the same. If you're not controlling it, that's when the exercise becomes risky. Yes, there's inherent risks. You know, yes, the shoulder's fragile in this position. Yes, you've got tons of uh, muscles involved back here, the pec minor, pec major, biceps, coracobrachialis, supraspinatus, subscapularis, bicep, there's probably a couple more I missed in there. Yes, there's a lot of things going on back here, but again, if you're concerned about going back there, again, you're in control of that. Lighten the weight, slow the damn movement down. Take control of your workouts. Same principle for life, take control, all right? It's not about life doing something to you, it's about you doing something to life. Now I'm going to my philosophical stuff, so I think we'll wrap up the video right there. All right, thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any follow-up questions about the fly, leave them in the comment section below. And if somebody's saying, but so-and-so says this about the chest fly, don't tell me what they say, tell me why they say it. Because I need to understand where they're coming from. We might agree, we might disagree, but I need to understand where they're coming from to be able to rebuttal it. True learning comes from action practice, execution.
All right, I think I've said enough on this. I've enjoyed shooting this video. If you guys did too, if you want more truth about videos, what body parts do you want? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed that, if you learned something new, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you want to optimize your exercise execution to build muscle faster in less time, check out massmechanics.com. There's a link above me. It'll take you to a page. You can learn all about my philosophy, my approach to lifting weights with baby weights so that you build a bigger body with less weight and less time so that you don't hurt yourself. It's a five hour exercise execution database. It's amazing, you're gonna learn so much about how to move in the gym, how to execute movement without hurting yourself. Massmechanics.com, link in the description box below or click here and I highly recommend you invest into your execution because it's not what you do, it's how you do it. I'll see you guys next time.